In this video, we're going to show how to geolocate an RF signal using our RF EyeSight software. You can see we're already geolocating the target on the map. To do this, we're using our two direction finding arrays to locate the transmitter using the angle of arrival or AOA technique. It uses amplitude across an array of directional antennas to determine a line of bearing on the target. This is shown visually in our polar plot here. You can see the amplitude at each bearing and also the calculated lines of bearing from the direction finders. As we have two arrays, we can have two intersecting lines of bearing and we can establish a geolocation on the target where those lines meet. If we take just a quick look at the spectrum, you can see we're trying to locate a signal that is overlapping and interfering with our radar signal. This is likely causing operational issues for the radar. The interference signal is also pulsing in and out of the spectrum. Given these two things, we need to be smart about how we approach our direction-finding mission. If we simply applied an AOA geolocation over this frequency, we would be victim to the problem that is actually causing our interest in the first place. The two signals are interfering with each other. I'll quickly show you what would happen by enabling this AOA mission. Our geolocation mission is trying to geolocate the energy from both signals at once, and our bearing is wildly inaccurate. I'll just turn this off. What we have done here is set an exclusion zone in the AOA mission over the radar signal, and we've also set a squelch level in the power axis. What does this mean? We've told the system to essentially ignore anything within the exclusion zone. This means that we can block out most of the radar signal from our AOA calculation. And we've also told the system to ignore anything below a certain power threshold. This filters out the noise when the intermittent interfere leaves the spectrum. And as you can see, it's filtering out the tail edge of the radar signal, which falls below our power threshold. This means that we have essentially bracketed out all unwanted information and are concentrated only on the interfering transmitter. As we can see from the polar plot, we're getting one clear line of bearing from each direction finder, rather than a confused combination of amplitudes from competing signals. If we look at the map, we're establishing the location for the transmitter with a fairly high degree of confidence. We can examine this in detail by turning on the quality indicator. The quality margins around the lines of bearing, the colored areas here, indicate the quality of the signal data being fed into the AOA mission. We can see it's ranging from moderate to good quality, and therefore, our confidence ellipse is small. We have also set what is called a quench time delay on our geolocation. This enables the geolocation to remain on the map after the signal leaves the spectrum. Again, just to clarify, this is only an example. There are many, many great tools within RFI Sight to tune and optimize your geolocation missions in order to give you the most accurate results. If you're interested in learning more about direction finding and RFI sight, please get in touch so we can discuss in more detail. So, what are the key factors that will determine success or failure when trying to locate a transmitter using AOA or another DF technique? First is your choice of equipment, both hardware and software. Is it able to deal with many different types of signals across a wide range of frequencies? Things like transient signals, hopping signals, and narrowband signals? Does it have a good signal resolution and a high probability of intercept? Your second factor is the local environment. What's the topography like? How built up is the area? What is the line of sight like? What kind of elevation is the receiver at? Do you have blind spots? Are you likely to have issues with multipath? All these factors can significantly impact accuracy. The third factor is the operator. Do they have the experience and expertise needed to accurately interpret the results they get? We've encountered individuals who have spent days chasing signals with direction-finding systems, only to discover they're chasing ghosts and reflected signals. As with every skill, comprehensive training is essential. For more videos from CRFS, make sure to like and subscribe.